So if you recall, last time we had met, we had talked about what functional interfaces were, and I described how functional interfaces are used as the basis for the type system for parameters that are passed to you that use lambda expressions and method references. And we kind of talked about some very simple examples of functional interfaces, things like runnable, things like callable, and so on. And what we're going to do today is we're going to start talking about some of the core functional interfaces that you'll find with with Java, modern Java. And these are important because they will provide the basis for other Java advanced features like Java Streams, Java Completable Futures, Rx Java, and so on. And the five or so interfaces we look at now, starting with now, are going to be the ones that we're going to see over and over again. There will be other ones, of course, but uh, you can, once you understand the core concepts with these functional interfaces, you'll see how they get apply in other places as well. So we're going to start today by our discussion of the predicate functional interface. And you'll see that we'll apply this in a couple of different contexts. The examples we'll be using will be for the Java Collections Framework. And the Java Collections Framework, which I hope you know something about already from other courses, provides you with lots of different kinds of abstract data type implementations, things like hash maps and things like array lists and linked lists and so on. And so this will be good because you'll learn not just how the functional interfaces work, but you'll also see how they get used in the context of some of the cool collections that are part of the Java Collections Framework. So what is a predicate? Well, just like in mathematics, a predicate is something that returns true or false. A predicate is essentially an interface that has a single method called test, and that method takes a parameter of type t, which is parameterized as type part of the, the uh, interface signature, and the test method returns a Boolean. So it either returns true or it returns false. So as you can see, the predicate is a generic interface that's parameterized by one reference type. That, of course, means that you can't have a predicate of int. Uh, you can't have a predicate of care. You can't have a predicate of a native type. You'd have to have a predicate of some kind of wrapper for the native type, such as integer or double or long with a capital L. The test method, as you can see, just takes a parameter of type T, which is genericized, so you can use this for an open-ended number of different types, and it returns a Boolean, so it either returns true or false. So very simple, there's only a single method. The signature of this abstract method of the functional interface is called the function descriptor, and it essentially is used to describe the signature of the lambda expression, so this particular functional interface can provide the type whenever you have a lambda expression that takes a parameter of type t and returns true or false. And so you can read a little bit more about what the function descriptors are if you take a look at the link at the bottom of this page. So let's take a look at an example just to make this uh, more concrete. And you can find this example in my ex10 folder, which is in my GitHub repository, as you can see here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a, a map, and hopefully you know what a map is. A map is just something that maps keys to values. And this map is going to, uh, in this particular case, be implemented by something called a concurrent hash map. And the concurrent hash map is going to be used to associate the names of Three Stooges, which was a an old TV show, slapstick kind of vaudeville-like TV show back from way back in the day. Uh, and it's going to map it to the IQs, my, my hypothesized IQs of the various stooges. Uh, they're stooges, so their IQs aren't very high. I, I probably actually made them too high uh, for what the stooges were like <clears throat> in their character roles, at least. You can read more about the three stooges at this link. It's, it's just there as a, as a funny joke, not meant to be anything deep or profound. And so you can see here, we're going to give uh, Larry an IQ of 100, Curly an IQ of 90, and Mo, who was usually the brightest of the Stooges, an IQ of, of 110. So make map is a so-called factory method that returns a map that maps string to integer, and it's implemented by a concurrent hash map. So hopefully that's just kind of a little review of things that you may already have seen in other parts of, of Java. 
So you can see here, we, we use the make map factory method to create an IQ map that maps string, the name to the integer, the IQ. And that's all just set up. The real thing I want to show you here is the use of a predicate, predicate functional interface as part of the remove if method. And you can see that remove if is a method that gets called on the so-called entry set of the IQ map. And so what it's going to do here is it's going to go ahead and get the entry set. So that's basically just a, a set of key value pairs with Larry 100, Curly 90, and Mo 110. And then we're gonna go ahead and pass a predicate to the remove if method. And the predicate lambda is going to remove all entries in the map whose IQ is less than or equal to 100. So you can see, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about the syntax of the Lambda expression here in a second, but you can basically see that what we're doing is we're saying, for each entry in the map, if the value of the entry is less than or equal to 100, then remove if. So that's the way you read this particular use of the functional programming features. Now, what's happening under the hood is that this Lambda is going to implement the test method of the predicate directly in line. So we're, we're not, there's no method here called test. That's implied because of the fact that we're using a predicate lambda that matches the signature that's expected by the predicate functional interface. So basically it's taking a parameter and it's returning true or false. The way that this works is that the entry that you see at the beginning is actually just kind of shorthand for open paren, entry, less than string, comma, integer, greater than, entry, close paren. So this is taking advantage of Java 8's type inference capabilities where it can deduce the type of the parameter. So you don't actually have to give it the full-blown type signature here, but you can just give it the name and it will infer the actual type, which in this case is something called an entry, which is one of the elements that's in the map. Okay, so now let's kind of switch gear and take a look at what remove if actually looks like. And remove if is a function that takes a predicate, as you can see, and it's got some uh, generic syntax hoo-ha that we'll talk about here briefly in a second. If you take a look carefully, you can see that this remove if method is part of the collection interface. And collection is a generic interface that's parameterized by type E. And E would, in this case, be essentially an element. So we would have a collection of, of elements, just like we have down here, uh, just like we have in this example. So the elements in this case would be like an entry, for example. And then you can see that the name of this parameter is called filter. And then you can also see inside the implementation of the remove if method that what it's doing internally is it's saying filter.test. So if you recall, remember the, the predicate has a test method defined on it. If you take a look at the top of the slide, you'll see that. And the test method is going to take in something of type T, which in this case is going to be an entry, and it's gonna go ahead and return true or false. So a couple other things to note here, you'll notice that this is a so-called default method. Default methods were added in Java 8, and of course they persist since that point. And a default method is something that can actually be used to provide an implementation in an interface. And the default methods allow people who are writing frameworks and collections and other kinds of things to add new functions to the interfaces of libraries and ensure binary compatibility with code written for older versions of the interfaces that lack those default methods. So this is a very clever way that Java was able to add in support for method implementations in interfaces, which had previously not been supported till Java 8, without breaking backward compatibility with earlier versions of Java. So it was, it was actually a very clever technique. So this is an implementation that all collections are going to have. You can see here that this funny syntax that says question mark super E is something that's known as a lower bounded wildcard. And this says that the, the type that's provided here must be a specific type or a super type of that type. So in this particular case, it's an entry, but it could also, if, if entry had a super type, it could also be one of those things as well. Don't get too wrapped up into the details of the syntactic sugar for the way the lower bounded wildcards work. If you wanna read more about the way that they behave, you can take a look at the link at the bottom of the slide. 
What I really want you to focus on though is the binding of the lambda expression, which as you can see is entry.get value less than 100, less than or equal to 100. That's the, that's the predicate lambda that's bound to this particular type descriptor, this particular descriptor of the predicate. And so in this case, entry.get value less than or equal to 100, that's the test that's going to be applied. And we don't have to provide all the syntactic elements. We don't have to give the name. It's not given a name. It's just a lambda. It's a, an anonymous block of code, unnamed block of code that can be created and passed around and then called later, as in the context of the remove if method. And then the way it works here is the code that was written inside the framework says if filter.test is going to be true or false, well, what that gets expanded to logically by the way that the runtime system works in Java, it doesn't actually work quite like this, but it's logically like this. It's as if it were to say, if each dot next, which gives us the next entry in the entry set, if that's get value method is less than or equal to 100, then it returns true. And in which case we're gonna go ahead and remove the item from the map. So this is a way of removing something conditionally. And so you don't have to write all this code. You just have to write the Lambda expression that I show up here, entry arrow, entry dot get value less than or equal to 100. And then the compiler will figure out how to substitute that into the actual call that's being made in the implementation of the remove if method that's part of the interface collection. Okay, so that was just a quick overview of kind of the syntax of Lambda expressions illustrated in the context of predicates. It's also demonstrating, of course, how you can look at this both from the calling point of view, which is this, and also the implementation point of view, which is this. So that's just kind of showing you how you can apply a predicate. Let's talk now about composing predicates. So it turns out it's possible to write code using the features that are part of Lambda uh, of the predicate a functional interface in order to be able to compose predicate objects together. So what, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at an example. We're gonna go ahead and make a predicate here and uh, we're gonna call the first predicate low IQ and it's going to go ahead and store a predicate which is entry arrow entry dot get value less than or equal to 100. That's the predicate that's being stored. So now we've, we've actually come up with a variable called low IQ that stores a predicate lambda expression or a lambda predicate. And then we also have another valuable, another valuable, another variable called curly, for curly, one of the three stooges. And that's going to be the lambda expression entry arrow entry dot get key equals the string literal curly. So that's gonna go ahead and make ourselves a predicate for that particular value. And then you can see down below, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I want to remove if you have low IQ and you have curly. So this is an example of composing two predicates using the and method. And so the, the and method is going to compose the two predicates. So it's gonna say low IQ, which is predicate one, and curly, which is predicate two. So that's an example of how you can compose predicates. Just demonstrating that there's more to a predicate than just the test method. There's also the, the and method. And if you look around in the interface for predicate, you'll see a few other things that it has as well. So that's, the, uh, that's basically the end of our overview of Java's predicate functional interface. I think you'll agree with me that this is a very simple interface and um, very simple, but it's also very powerful and it's used quite a bit for some of the methods we'll talk about when we get to other more advanced parts of modern Java, like Java streams and its filter, aggregate operation. It's also used in RxJava and Project Reactor for their filter operations as well. And so we'll get a chance to learn more about predicate, but it's a good starting point because it's really, really simple. One method called test, parameterized by something of type T, returning Boolean.